All right, this is our slime mold project, day one. It's already reached over and grabbed the oat. It's only been rehydrating for about three hours. Okay, this is 36 hours into the slime mold experiment. Not much of an experiment, I'm just bringing it back to life. Um, I had grown it last year, year before. I was not expecting this much growth, but considering that um, this entire triangle of paper towel was fully covered with the dried with the dried amoeba site um, I mean it's pretty much at least half of it has migrated off that's pretty wild this is the other one here not quite as extensive but um, this one was more active right off the bat it fully colonized the oats in you know about 24 hours or so <clears throat> I've just uh, given them a little daily wetting, make it nice and fresh. You want just enough water in there to make it moist, but any runoff should, should be dribbled out. And uh, now it is feeding time. I feed them oats, not the instant kind. They're not actually eating the oats themselves. They are eating the film of bacteria that lives on top of the oat. So I'm just going to put this uh, right here on top of that. This amoeba site is actually one cell. There's only one cell membrane. Um, but there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of nuclei uh, all floating around. And you can chop off a piece and it'll just keep on growing. They uh, clone themselves instantly. Uh, these are actually technically, biologically the same individual. Um, once I had a stack about five or six all cloned from the same individual and I had them in my desk drawer and they all crawled out of their petri dishes and rejoined back together into one organism and then crawled out looking for food. So they really do behave kind of like an animal. It's awesome. Oh, that looks cool. Alright, this is the third day of the slime mold. <laughs> it's, it's crawling out of the lid. You can see it. The lid is held on by its If I were to place an oat here, it would crawl out and get it. They're pretty amazing. Can you see the highways of the veins? It looks like a little forest of trees. Look at that, I'm trying to get out. The blob. Ooh. It creeps and sleeps and rolls and flows across the floor and all across the wall. The blob. This is day four of the amoeba site experiment. The blob. As you can see, it is out. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this petri dish and I'm going to place it into a larger container and I'm going to get the amoebocyte to crawl completely out of this petri dish. I found some gelatin in my cabinet, so I'm going to see if that's going to work as a uh, MacGyver style agar. Basically, is a pulse the cytoplasm from one side of the organism and then back to the other like a tide. It really is a blob. It just moves uh, a bit slower. I still love him. I love you little blob. I love you. Oh, I love you. So awesome. And if you notice here, 
This is the original triangle of paper towel and it's pretty much completely migrated off of it. There's just this uh, gelatinous re residue left. There's no, no longer any living cells there. Blob. Blob. Okay, so here we have our, our gelatin has set. Um, just gonna, I'm just going to take the petri dish with the uh, leading edge here and plop it in the corner. Alright, time to put some wrap on this baby and stick her in the drawer. Alright, you can see the amoebocyte has completely covered the outside of the petri dish now and is crawling out onto the gelatin. I don't know how well this gelatin is going to work. It looks like it's kind of uh, eating it. Alright, we were successful. Our plasmodium has completely exited the petri dish. You can really see the spread of it when it's underlit. It's coming for you. The blob.